Coding is easy. The hard part is knowing what to learn and most importantly, what to skip. In the next few minutes, I am going to show you exactly what you need to know in order to build any online business. My name is Mark. I have built those 30 tiny internet businesses and I'm now financially independent. If you start today, you could be making money online with a digital product in just a few weeks. So stay with me. Okay, so the number one mistake people make when they're learning how to code is they want to go too fast and use those great AI tools to build a website. Yes, you can input a little bit of English and it's going to create a beautiful site for you, but this is misleading. If you want to add more features, if you want to fix bugs, you will have no idea what to tell the AI because you need to know the fundamentals of the internet in order to be able to instruct an AI to code for you. So we want to start first with the fundamentals. And for that, of course, we're going to use AI, but not to code, but to explain us how the internet works. The first part is understanding how the internet works as a consumer. You right now browsing YouTube, you are an internet consumer. What I would do very first is to go to chat GPT and just explain me what is happening when I visit whatever website, your favorite website.com. Ask ChatGPT to not use any technical skills and to explain this simply using metaphors. Try to understand the, the, the overall journey of what happens when you visit a website. Then you will want to learn the fundamental concepts. Internet browser, HTTP, URL, DNS, those are some of the core concepts of the internet. The entire internet relies on those concepts. So try to learn what each of them is doing without getting too much into details, but just the overall, the core concepts. And again here, you want to use ChatGPT to explain you exactly what it is. And then to have a peek at what's next, open the developer console, just like this, and inspect any website and over the elements and try to, you know, just get curious of what you actually see as a developer. The next part is to understand internet as a developer. What do you have to do as a developer so that your website is seen by millions of people across the world? First, you will need to install a code editor. You have VS Code, you have Cursor AI, which are great editors, and then you want to build web pages. If you have completed the previous step, you now now know what a web page is and you want to learn those three languages HTML CSS and JavaScript one more time any website you see on the internet is made with those three languages you don't want to go too deep you want to learn just 10% of each of those languages just enough in order for you to build a tiny web page that you could send to a friend. It could be just your portfolio website, that could be just a landing page for your future business idea. It doesn't matter. You can build anything with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For each of those three languages, I added some of the core components you want to learn. So for instance, you want to learn what are HTML links, inputs, button, etc. HTML is used as a structure of a page. CSS is mostly like to style things. So uh, properties like colors, display, margin, padding, etc. are important to learn. And JavaScript is used to make a web page interactive, like uh, pressing buttons, like double clicking on here, for instance, don't overthink it. Just learn the minimum you need to build a little web page and show it to a friend. By the way, if you need this roadmap, I'll add a link in the description so that you can uh, follow along with me. And whenever you're done learning one of those elements, you can just uh, double tap and I think it will save your progress. Okay, now we are entering the fun part. You're watching this video probably because you want to build an online business. So you will need a landing page to present your idea. You will need a probably like a private user dashboard so people can do stuff like update their profile or download files and probably a way to send emails and charge payments. We're going to cover all that in this section. And the first thing you want to do is to pick a tech stack. This is my tech stack. Uh, I use the, this, these tools and products and libraries in order to uh, build my 30 websites. For instance, I use Daisy UI as a component library to style my websites. I use Auth.js to authenticate users. I use Datafast to track web analytics. Now you might be wondering why we're not using pure HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And the answer is just because of the speed. You want to ship apps fast to the market. You could technically build anything with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, but as developers, we are, we are lazy and, and so it's better to use a tech stack like React to build UI components instead of writing them in pure HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. As a quick example, uh, if you want to make just a button with a counter where when you press it increases the counter by one, this is what you would have to do using HTML and JavaScript. But if you're using React, this library in order to build user interface, you would just have to write this. In other words, having a tech stack will help you ship faster. There's a big misconception, especially on YouTube, where people will try to make you feel like you're missing out if you don't try the, the newest UI library or the latest uh, React.js uh, version or something. This is pure procrastination. What you want to do is you pick one tech stack and you stick to it forever. Uh, if you want, you can just copy mine. This is a very popular tech stack. You don't have to use all the third-party tools I'm using here. Uh, a lot of them are have a, like a specific use case, and we're going to cover that later. Okay, once you have your tech stack, you need to get just a little comfortable with the terminal. The terminal is this little app 
that is installed already on your computer that lets you uh, navigate with your computer, but as a developer. There are four comments here that I think are important to know. And again, ask ChatGPT to explain you real quick what is the terminal and how to use it. Then you're gonna have to set up your computer. So that depends on the tech stack you've picked. Of course, for this video, I'm gonna pretend you've picked the exact same tech stack as me. First, you'll need to install Node.js. So it lets you run JavaScript everywhere. Then you want to also install Next.js, which is like a framework that's gonna uh, compile and combine all of your pages that we're gonna serve to the client. And if you haven't already, you will need a code editor. And then you will have an entire project up and running. At this point, you want to understand a little bit of what is going on because this uh, Next.js thing is going to install a bunch of stuff. So let's, uh, you know, step by step, break down what is on your machine. So first, you will have access to a package manager called NPM. It's basically a bunch of uh, libraries and free stuff that other developers have built that you can reuse. For instance, this is one of my websites and you can see here, there's a beautiful chart that changed colors, etc. I did not create this chart by myself. I am using a library called Rechart and this library is available on NPM. You want to understand a little bit of how NPM works. You are basically two things. You have a package.json, which is like the kind of the control center of your app, which you will find right here in your project. And you have two commands, npm install to install a package, and npm run to run a script. Another big part is the linter called eslint. If I go back to my code and I make a typo, I remove these brackets, then I will see red colors. It's because I have a linter, basically a little program that runs on my machine that tells me when I make mistakes as a developer, so I make just less mistakes. You also want to understand a little bit about how the Next.js architecture works. So as you can see here in this project, I have a bunch of folders, I have app, components, data. Uh, you might have less than this because this is an actual project where I build stuff on it, uh, but you will probably have the app folder and a few other files. Uh, you want to ask ChatGPT to explain you a little bit of how this works. A quick tip here, what you can do is you can ask an AI inside of your code editor uh, to explain you what these or that does. Okay, the next one is the version control system. So there are two major components to that. There is a uh, GitHub, GitHub is basically Google Drive for developers. So this is, for instance, my profile on GitHub. Those are all the repositories, so all the projects I work on. You wanna create an account, and this is where you're gonna start pushing code. And to push code, to upload your code, you'll need to use Git. So you need to install Git. And then you want to learn the very basic of Git. Git add, Git commit, Git push. That's all you need to know in order to use Git. It can get really complex, so just learn those ones. And Git is going to help you make versions of your code. So whenever you make an update on your app, you can write a little message and then you push this update and it will be pushed automatically to GitHub. Okay, now you have a little understanding of your project. You want to move on and you want to start building a landing page. You want to start with the visual part, things that you can send to friends that people can see because it's the, I mean, at least for me, it is the funniest part. So there are three major components when you're building a landing page with this modern tech stack. One is React. React is a library that is going to help us build interactive user interactions, like user interface. Um, those are of the core concept of React that I think you should be learning. And these are some a little advanced JavaScript concept that you haven't learned previously that you will have to learn as well to uh, use React properly. Next.js is a wrapper, like a, it's a framework around React. It's gonna organize all your pages and files, etc. One more time here, you want to learn just the minimum you need to build something. Uh, this is, for instance, what our React hooks are. You will learn that later. Um, there are around 20 of them. I built 30 websites using the three hooks only. So you really, really, really don't need to learn everything. Okay, and the final component, the styling part is done with Tailwind CSS. Uh, this is what you would find in projects like this, where you would uh, write semantic classes in order to style your app. And on top of it, I use the Daisy UI component library. So this uh, little website here, where uh, they give you a bunch of components like those uh, toggle, checkbox, uh, cards, etc. I want my uh, website designs to always look similar. I don't want to design everything from scratch. And so Daisy UI gives me access to a bunch of components. Once you build a little something to present, you want to deploy your site on the internet. I use Versal to host all of my websites. For instance, those are all of my projects on Versal, and this is what it looks like as a uh, workflow. So you as a developer work on your computer, you git commit and git push your changes, which will be uploaded to GitHub. And then when uh, there's a new update on GitHub, they're going to update Versal, the, your server on the internet, and Versal is going to uh, run some comments and to deploy, redeploy your new website. Uh, you will see it 
it is actually extremely simple. And by the way, I am not paid by Versal or any of the other uh, tools I promote in this video. This is not a sponsored video. Those are just the tools I use for myself. And finally, you will want to get a domain name. That's the funniest part as a developer. Uh, you, I use Namecheap to buy domain names. If for some reason the .com is not available for your idea, which is likely to happen because they are all taken, um, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't need to have a .com tld.com extension in order to make money on the internet. Just try to buy a domain name that is easy to read and makes sense. And congratulations, you can already build a front page, you can add a pay button, and you can already make money on the internet. Now you might want to do some more advanced stuff like saving users in database, downloading things, etc. This is where the backend notion comes in place. A backend is basically all the things that are not visible to visitors of your site. One of the most common use of backend is API endpoints. An API endpoint is basically like a little door where you can send information Information. You can save that someone click on your site, you can uh, create a checkout link, you can save a user in the database. It all starts with an API endpoint. Some developers are using different framework and even different languages to create API endpoints, but since we're using Next.js for our project, you can just create an entire API endpoint using the slash app slash API folder. If you could just create a file named route.js in this folder, you will have created an API endpoint. And congrats, you are a backend developer. So you will learn some of the fundamentals concept we talked about earlier, what is an HTTP method, what is what are HTTP parameters, and how to return a response from this API endpoint. There are also some advanced JavaScript uh, things you will have to learn because then it brings the notion of asynchronous. When you call an API, the request has to go through the internet. You don't know how long that takes. So uh, that's why we have to um, handle those cases with JavaScript async await and promises. And if you want to have fun, you can also call another API, not your own API, but someone else. For instance, uh, ChatGPT has an API. Uh, you can uh, get started in just a few minutes. And you can, for instance, just use this little piece of code in order to call the ChatGPT API. Now, having an API endpoint is nice, but you likely want to do something with this API endpoint. And one of the most common uh, use of a backend is to have a database, a store some information. For my database, I use a NoSQL database. It's MongoDB. It's hosted on MongoDB Atlas. So this little website here, they have a free plan so you can create a little cluster, like a little mini database for free. And because I'm lazy and I want to visualize my database on my computer without having to code, I use Compass, MongoDB Compass, in order to um, see uh, what's inside of my database. And to connect to your database, MongoDB is going to give you a little connection string, which is like a private key that only you should know in order to uh, connect to the database and perform operations like read or write the database. That's when the notion of environment variables comes in. So in your project, there is something called dot of dot local, which is like a secret file that you want to keep on your machine only. Uh, I cannot show you mine at the moment, uh, but it's basically where you want to store all your uh, connection string, API keys, etc. Going back to the examples of ChatGPT earlier, um, if you want to call the ChatGPT API, they will also give you an, an OpenAI API key, like a secret key in order to uh, identify yourself and say like, hey, I am developer XYZ and I want to ask ChatGPT this question. Right now that we have a database, moving on to authenticating users. For that, I use auth.js. Uh, this open source project here is very simple to get started. Um, with just a few lines of code, you can have a page like this one when you have a button for people to log in with Google, log in with email, etc. Uh, they have full core concept. The provider is basically what uh, type of services users will be able to use to log in. So Google and Magic Links, for instance. Adapters is where you're going to store the user data. So when the user log in with uh, Google, for instance, I want to save the user data in my database. And OSJS is going to do that automatically for me. You also want to learn about cookies because those are like very important like you need cookies in order to authenticate users. And then you will see it's pretty simple. You want to sign in, sign out users. So there's like just two functions. And then you will create private pages, private APIs, like content that is only available for people who are logged into your app. You might have to send emails. There are two types of email. There's the transactional emails and the marketing emails. Marketing emails are the ones who usually end in your spam folder. Uh, transactional emails are, are emails that we send as developer for people to sign in. For instance, you can send like a, a login to my app and there's a magic link and you would send that by email. I use a recent for that. They're really good because they also have marketing emails. So if I if I want to follow up and you know uh, send marketing emails like discounts, I can use uh, recent as well. You will learn about MX record, which are like a DNS record specifically for sending emails. And, um, and of course, you'll learn about sending magic links. And right, now moving on to the next part, charging money on the internet. For that, you will need 
a payment provider. Uh, there are two famous ones, Stripe and Lemonscuzi and many others. I use Stripe personally. Uh, if you're from India, you won't be able to use Stripe, so you can use Lemonscuzi. Uh, they make everything a little simpler because they handle the VAT for you. I have been using Stripe for a long, long time, and I basically open a new Stripe account for any kind of business I launched on the internet. Depending on what type of payment you want to handle, uh, you will likely have to learn how to create a checkout session. So that implies creating like a, a physical component, a little uh, button like this one for people to click and it will uh, open a payment page just like this one. And the webhook Stripe is going to send you a little notification to your API endpoint that says, hey, this person with this email just made a payment. This is where you would uh, give the person access to your service. And then very likely you will need a customer portal or customer billing, whatever this is called. Uh, this is the place where usually you can go uh, here and click billing. I can see what is my uh, current plan, what the credit card is used, what is the invoice I'm using. In Stripe, it's called portal. It's very simple to set up. They'll give you back a little URL like this one. And you can give to your customers and they can handle everything here themselves. Right now, you already have all the core concept of building a digital business. Uh, one thing that is very important is about security to make sure that you don't leak your customer's data, that uh, everything is safe, etc. For that, you can use AI heavily. Inside of your code base, you normally have a chat with an AI, and then you can ask lots of questions. Do you think uh, my app is safe? You can start like large and refine until you uh, cover every edge cases. You really wanna make sure that you ship an app where uh, there is no security flaws. There are things that are important in terms of security, it's to understand the notion of React server and client components. It's safe to do things inside of React server components because they stay on the server. It's not safe to do things like secure things on the client components. Of course, you wanna use environment variables and store your API keys there to make sure that you don't push them accidentally on the internet. Uh, you want to make sure that your API endpoints are safe and secure. For instance, that you verify that the person is authenticated in order to make the request, that the person eventually has paid for your service in order to make the request, etc. And then for more advanced concept where you uh, your app is deployed on the internet, you might have like uh, people trying to scam you or something. Um, you could use middlewares or firewalls in order to uh, block access to your app to uh, some countries, some people, etc. And uh, finally, you might want to learn some advanced concepts. I don't really recommend learning anything unless you have like a strong use for it. But those are some things that might be worth your time uh, in Next.js learn how to use metadata in order to um, eventually be indexed and rank on Google. You can learn how to use Tailwind CSS uh, transitions and animations in order to make your app a little bit nicer to use. The local storage in JavaScript is a really nice place to uh, store some data where you don't need a database. That is really up to you and up to your needs. And we are now entering the most exciting part, the 10X programmer using AI. Likely in your code editor, you already have an AI that will help you write code, explain, et cetera. If you're using VS Code, they have a free plan. If you're using Cursor like me, I think it starts at $20 a month. The LLM is basically like the type of large language model you're using. I'm using Claude 3.7 Sonnet at the moment. They just released it. Uh, but to be honest, it really doesn't matter as long as you don't do some like very advanced programming, uh, it wouldn't make much difference and your AI will become your best buddy. There are three core features, the autocomplete ones, more like a inline feature where you can select a line, uh, press command K and you can just, you know, rewrite a little something. Uh, you have chat features that I use usually to ask the AI about how to organize my data, about security, etc. And the composer, which can use an agent and can create files for you, run script, etc. You can become super, super duper fast using AI. You just have to use it Right, I'll link below to a video that I made about exactly how I use AI to code 10X faster. There has never been a better time in history to learn how to code and build a side project. For sure, coding takes time, but if you show up every single day for 30 minutes, you won't believe where you are in just a few months from now. Future You is begging you to get started right now, so close this video and go build something. And just in case you want to dive a little deeper into this roadmap, I made a longer three hours long video for free on YouTube where I walk you step by step through each of those steps. Until the next video, I hope you keep shipping.